Well, hey y'all, this is Rip One Outdoors. Yeah, we're still down in silk stocking. We're, this is another video I'm making. We're on a Magicycle Deer. Pulling back down to Twisted Oak Drive here. There's a little bridge down there to the right. Uh, that's where we ended the video on the last time. But uh, just admiring how beautiful it is, y'all. Look how pretty and green. Um, I almost w wish I could just pull my bike down there by the water and take a few pictures, but uh, that land belongs to somebody, I'm sure. So before we go too far, hey, roll that intro. All right, we back with y'all. Coming on back around through silk stocking. Why do they call it silk stocking? I, I, I don't, I have no idea, y'all. All I just know is I know my daddy and mama, they always called it, oh, they live up there in silk stocking. And you talk about mama where did the Crosby's live? Hun, they live up there in silk stock. Look at that squirrel. This old brick wall here on my right, this is a very what do you call it? Photographic place. There's a lot of people come here after weddings and what have you and take uh, pictures and all there. The squirrels are active today. I tell you what, they was active at the house. I think I've went down Tongue Tree Drive. Yeah, I've went down there. I don't go very far down there. Let's just cut out and go on down this way. I don't know how far Glenwood goes down in here, but we fix some ride down in there. Oh, it just ends right there. Well, no, it don't. Yeah, it does. It just ends right there. Somebody's driveway there. Look at that little house up in there, y'all. That's what you call, is that what you call one of them uh, California deck houses? I don't know. The way it's built. A lot of open, a lot of open things. Yeah, these azaleas got burned, y'all. You see this? That was from the freeze we got the other night. And I mean, it burnt the leaves on them. It's like Joy said on his video, you'd have come through here a week or so ago. It's all been lit up. It's been beautiful. Telling about cop stories. I worked from 1987 to 1989. I tell you it's one of them things where 
there's a there's companies that I went to work for that I will never ever forget and I will never ever forget what a, I guess you'd say a blessing they were to me because of what I learned that would carry me to where I am today and I'll try to show you that in a little while So I worked from 1987 to 89 for the Picayune Police Department. I do, I'll be honest with y'all. I was just a country boy. Imagine that. I didn't know anything about. I didn't know anything about the city. I didn't know anything about how how people live. Oh boy, it's putting on a roof. I didn't know anything about how to uh, a police police work knew nothing I got a water line leaking right in the middle of the street let's see we're out of wild here but you know when when you got what happened was is I had a uh, I had a young family. They're cutting a pecan tree down. I had a young family. That was Candace at the time. And I tell you, them notes started rubbing together. If y'all know what I mean. And had had all kind of bills. Uh, I actually paid for Candace to be born. I paid the hospital bill by busting firewood. Hey, you scratched. You did. You did what you could do, and that's what I did, and that's what I still do today. But I am. I. I look. I'm. I'm blessed. I am so much better off today than what I. What I was back then. I, I'm just blessed. But so you do what you got to do. You got to make a living. You got to make hey. You got to make bills. So I come up here, and at least at least the city of Picayune. Look, they had they had uh, insurance. I had no insurance, none whatsoever. They had insurance. They had. Uh, the whole works you know what a city what a municipality would have insurance retirement plan and all that but the way i felt the more i worked there i mean i worked there with some people that had been there 20 years but the more i worked there i found out what good is a retirement if you starve to death before you ever get there or, or watch your family just go broke before you ever get there what what good is it so that was a dilemma anyway anyway I stayed with them two years and that's all I wanted that old house look at the look at the junk no shrimping boat back in there uh, refrigerator and freezers that's this in silk stocking y'all but I never forget one night there was only two of us working it was me and my supervisor supervisor old Paul Lacker good friend of mine he was my training instructor when I hired on and they called me now y'all know where the VFW is. I know I'm not talking above your head. Y'all know where the VFW is. It's out there on Ridge Road. We go by it every time we go to Walmart. Okay, so y'all, y'all know where the VFW is. Well, they got the tree down. Let's go see if they cut it down on the house. I don't think they did. No, everything looks good. Yep, they cut her down. Looks like it was dead. But I got a call and they said 34. That was my number, 34. 
They said you got a 10-10 in progress at the VFW. Ten ten is a fight. Fight in progress. She told me she and she come on there, she said 34. She said go to channel two. When that mean when she told me to go to channel two, that meant she had something private she wanted to tell me. I went to channel two and she she told me she said she said 31 is tied up booking a prisoner and he can't get away or something or another she said I've got you a county officer coming to help you I said okay and she told me she said 34 she said they are 10 8 Russ if you're listening you know what 10 8 means that means you're you're in service that means everything is 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 everything is functioning within established parameters and when, but when you say on, uh, when you're talking about a fight and you say they're 10 8 that means they are getting with it they're hey they are hammered down and that's what she told me she said they 10 8 i was and and very in high anticipation going down there I had to run all the way from North Picayune. I run down there, Code 3, sight lights and siren. And old uh, Rochelle Mark was a deputy sheriff. Rochelle Mark, y'all, was a big man. I mean, he was a big man. He was six, probably 6'5", six, weighed about 255, something like that. Donald, you're on there, you can, uh, you can verify that. He was a big man. I would not want to tackle Rochelle Mark. I would not want to tangle with him whatsoever. Rochelle got on the, the police channel and told me, he said 34. He said 34. He said if you can if you can hold on till I get there, he said, I got this Chevrolet smashed to the floor. <laughs> He said he had that thing smashed to the floor. I knew what he meant. He mean he was he was hammered down on that Chevrolet coming coming my location. But he there was only like two sheriff's officers in the whole county at that time. They were nowhere near like what they have now. Somebody fixing to build them. Huh? Uh, that's gonna be a little house there, I guess. Yeah. So we got down there. I actually beat him there, but the minute I got there, I could see the fight was the fight was over with. And what happened was, is one of the one of the band members said something to the drummer's wife, who was out in the crowd. And so the the band got in the fight, and there was. Y'all, I'm not going to lie to you. It was pandemonium had set in. There was broken instruments. The drums were scattered all over all over the dance floor. There was guitars broken. Uh, who was that used to break the guitars all the time? There was guitars broken. Drumsticks laying everywhere. Uh, electronic instruments, chords scattered. It was a mess. And, but you know, I was fortunate. I said, how in the world? When I, but when I was driving up there, how in the world am I gonna handle this by myself? Cause Rochelle ain't here yet. But I was fortunate the fight was already over with. And you know what? I'm glad it was. Cause there was not much that I could have done there by myself. I knew some of them old boys that, that frequented the BFW. I knew them and were good friends with them, whatever. I'd go in there on like a walkie talk or something like that. Hey, they'd always, you know, stop. Hey, how's your mama? How's your daddy? And stuff like that. I'd talk to them. We're just doing a little public relations work. But that's one fight that I'm glad I didn't have to, I'm glad I didn't have to address that.
Yeah, old Rochelle. Rochelle, when he, if he got there, if he is needed, I tell you, Rochelle would have been a man. He was a man you'd have wanted on your side. Not the kind of man you want to tangle with. That man was like that old, like old Big John in that movie, uh, in that, in that song, Big. <laughs> that dog scared me. Yeah, he was like Big Bad John. All right, let's ease on back out of here. I think we're on Bowley Avenue now. We're doing good on time. We're doing good on our battery. 142, yeah. We're doing good. They got a little, uh, they got a little street, uh, railroad side market going on up here. I'm gonna ride, I'm gonna ride through there and see what they got. I don't have any cash on me, but I keep, I keep some, uh, car wash quarters in the truck. Yeah, let's ride over there and see what the folks has got. That's one of the oldest houses in Picayune right there. If I'm not mistaken, that's the old Eastman Tate house. I gotta watch it in these gravels right here, y'all, because I don't want these things to slip me up here. Yeah, let's take it easy through here. Big old railroad, dog. Uh, railroad gravels. and jellies and what have you. All right. Didn't see nothing there. We're going to turn left right over here. We're gonna ease right up in here. PJ's Coffee House here on the left. Picayune, Lumber and Tongue Oil Center named for New Orleans newspaper edited by former Local resident Eliza Jane Nicholson, famed as poet Pearl Rivers, and pioneer in opening of journalism to women. Y'all, we're here in front of the city hall. I couldn't think of a better place to say say my bid my adieus then here in front of the veterans memorial here that's the 138th engineer pontoon bridge company they went to korea and they built a pontoon bridge across some kind of a river over there i wish i knew what it was but that's all the me that's all the men i know a lot of those men there's my uncle herman right there lives where the dogs are down the road there y'all uh, down the road from the house. Uh, that was Uncle Herman. Uh, William C. Gerald. Cotton Gerald. Uh, who else? Got Uncle Robert on there somewhere. 
Robert Mitchell. He was on. He was on there. But anyway, we'll we'll say we say our farewells here, and we appreciate y'all watching. Hey, y'all don't forget about that link in the description there for MagiCycle. And uh, hit that like and that subscribe if you will. And if you don't, that's that's fine. That's fine. We appreciate y'all watching. All right. We'll catch y'all on the flip-flop. Rip one out.